guys, welcome back to another iPhone tutorial. This is one I've been kind of avoiding for a while because it's Core Data. Now I've used Core Data before in a few small applications and it's always kind of given me a headache. So I never really sat down and looked at it. I kind of just found out how it worked and didn't really play around it enough. But I decided to go back and do it again because Core Data is, and it's um, if you haven't used database before, it's a relational database. So if you have, say, like a college database, you'll have students, courses, faculties, you'll have to have a link between them, you know, for students registered. You don't want to have everything lumped to one database. You want to keep them separate and have a connection between them. Core data is like that. It's a relational database. And what this does is it creates a wrapper around information, um, like SQL, Lite, and all that. So it's a very powerful tool, but it's very different to a lot of things you'd have seen before. In fact, it's totally different to probably anything you've ever done before in terms of construction. So I'm going to do a quick demo here, um, very basic, and then I'm going to evolve it, maybe over one or two more tutorials, into more complex ones. So first of all, create an empty application, and you'll notice that in a few of them, you won't actually see the ability to have um, core data in them, because only a few of them allow you to construct core data from the start. So empty application, and it's called a core data uh, tutorial and you can leave make sure core data is ticked and you can leave ARC on it's not going to affect us It'll make it slightly easier and create okay uh, we don't need anything in the header file okay this is gonna be a very kind of quick and messy way of doing it not messy it's just a very simple way of showing you how to create core data objects so in the delegate let's make some room just make a method called our old favorite void, not particularly void, create data. And then in your if you application, did load self create data. I just don't like leaving a lot of code in this uh, method. I always like to make keep it separate. Okay, so before we actually create the data, we have to go into our core data itself. Okay, this may look kind of scary to you, and well, it's scary to me anyway. You have your attributes, relationships, and fetch properties. Attributes are safe, like, okay, I'll just show you what I mean. First of all, you have to create an entity. An entity is your object, your model context, okay? So add entity. Now I'm going to call it phone. Okay, so to say the application is going to be a phone book. You need a way to store all the information, and with NC to default, it's kind of very time consuming. But if you make a relational database, you can just slot information into parts, remove, change, alter, all that kind of stuff. So, we've now created an entity called phone, okay? So, we want to add attributes to the phone. So, what's in a phone? Your name, sorry, what's in the person's information? Their name, so it's a string, okay? And then number. And set number to int 32. Awesome. And this happened to me last time. Just make sure you click on the right bloody number because sometimes it flicks around on you and just annoys you. So name is string and numbers in 32. Make sure these are correct so, so you can see name, string, number in 32. Okay. Now we want to access these in our file, in our program. Okay. So click on entity, make sure. So I click on phone even, make sure it's highlighted, file, new, file, and click on core data, ns manage subclass, next, and next. And if I go, what's this, okay, what this is doing is this has automatically mapped the, this entity for us in two, two files. So see, the, the phone is now a core data object, has uh, set our name and number for us and has made them into mutable um, entities for us to use an application. Okay, so that's now available to be accessed. So now we have to import these. Import phone. Okay, now this may be new to you, this, this kind of context, this code. So I'll explain as I go along. Okay, first of all, we have to, to to get into this NS managed object context, okay? Managed object context is, first of all, we're instantiating this, but it's this is what you, you do call to add or change or make an action. Sorry, make an action or change anything really um, 
using core data. So we're making a new uh, data model, so we have to perform this action. I'm just going to call it context. Context equals self manage context, okay? Because we've already um, synthesized this already. It's um, it's part of core data, so we're now making a new object of this. So we're saying, okay, everything we call from now on is going to be related to this core data model. And sorry to say it's a bit kind of convoluted, but this is just the way core data is. It's a bit of a head wreck to get a, get understanding, but it's very powerful. Once you have it, it's like SQL or any relational database. Once you have it, it's very, very powerful. It just takes a while to get used to. Okay, now we have to um, incorporate our data model itself. Well, we have to make an object to input stuff into it in the first place. So foam detail equals ns entity description insert new object for entity name. Yeah, okay. So entity description. So our entity is phone and description okay we're gonna be putting um we want to be instantiating this, okay? So new object for entity. So we want to put something new into this entity. We have a name and number. We want to put information into these two headers. So it's called phone. And in manage object context, context. Okay, so our link is now set up. We now are going to be accessing everything through this. So detail dot name equals I Elmo. And detail dot number equals don't forget we set this to be a NS number, not an int. We can't just um do it that way. So NS number 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 with int um let's see the student Irish number three five three one 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 two 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 three three four 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 it's not really an Irish number but you get the idea. Okay. I probably too many numbers in thirty two only goes up to a certain amount. Yeah there we go. I think ten million size in thirty two goes. I'm not too sure exactly. Could be a hundred million. I'm not gonna count that. Okay. Now we have to make an NS error just to make sure it'll check if it's working. NS error. So if context save and error. So if there is an error, so say something goes wrong, the problem with core data is that if you have a problem early on here and it crashes without an error checker, it won't tell you what the error is because it's not an Xcode problem, it's a core data problem. So it'll give you a SIGBART error and it'll drive you absolutely insane because it won't tell you what the problem is. So you do need these error checkers in core data. Because if you spell one thing wrong here, it'll just crash and won't tell you what the problem is. So if it crashes, error, fool. Mr. T says, pay the fool. Okay, now we have now entered these things into the phone entity, okay? But how do we get them out? You can't just NS log this, it's not going to respond because it's a, it's probably stored in memory or in some format I don't understand. So we have to pull this out into something we do understand. So done by NS fetch fetch requests. Fetch request, and we're going to call it a uh, request. And we have to instantiate and as fetch request a lock in it. Probably an easy way to do it, but we're going to do it the long way. Now, you see here we used NS entity description, okay? We're going to do this again to pull the information back out. So NS entity description, and we're going to call it entity. Entity, spell it right, grant. Equals NS entity description, entity for name phone. I know it seems like a very long way of doing it to pull out one little information bit here, but it's just, as I said, a quick example of showing you what we're doing. I know it's like we've added just to pull it out again, but it's just showing you. So now, to pull this information out through our, um, our object, it's request set entity entity. Okay, so now this request is going to try and pull it out through this nostril essentially. So put 
we can't just directly pull out one object. We can, but it's no point. We want to check and see if we have multiple entries. All right. So, ns array r equals context execute fetch request uh, request and error. Okay, just quickly recap what this is doing. So we don't need to set up an array, like a locket or anything, because the array is empty and we're not going to be using this array anywhere else. We can just instantiate a pointer for an array. So this array is going to be equal to the data model request for the request. So we're going to pull out everything so if this, was, if this was SQL, I think this is essentially going to say select all from a phone where everything is. It's going to pull out all the results we have, but we want to say what results we want. So for, uh, I don't know why I put it in this way, for phone, phone in our there for our phone in R. So we're just making a point of the phone object for everything in phone. We want to print ns log name percent at um foe dot name and ns log number. And because it's as number, not an int, we still do our string type cast, foe.number. If you try and cast an int, it'll give out to you. Okay, we're going to build and run. Excuse me. Take your time, SCO, there's no rush whatsoever. Jesus, 12 minutes. And as you can see here, we are printing out our core data objects. Now ignore the last part because we're still in the delegate, not doing anything important. Now, as I said, there's a very quick example. This is just showing you how to create a matter uh, object context, putting stuff into it and pulling it out. So you're creating it, putting it into the data model, and then you're pulling it back out. Okay, very simple. I'm going to leave it there. And next one, I'm going to expand this. I'm going to load a table view controller. I'm going to put this stuff into a cell, and then I'm going to Maybe if I can find out a way to you know do something fancy and put data in using maybe text fields and model view controllers. And if we get really fancy later on, I'll make another one that allows it to add them and delete them and all manner of fancy things. But for now, I'm going to leave it at that and I will talk to you soon. Thanks, folks. See you.